The continent of Africa is blessed with so much of culture, lifestyle, physical features, and above all abundant natural resources. However, not many know the wonders of Africa, because unfortunately, the depicted image of Africa oftentimes is a hungry, unsecured continent where people survive by the scrub of their fingers. But among the many nations in Africa that have changed that narrative, one in the western regions shine bright. Ghana is a nation in western Africa that is located on the Gulf of Guinea coast. Ghana is one of the most important nations in Africa, despite its tiny size and sparse population. This is in part due to its abundant natural resources and in part because it was the first black African nation south of the Sahara to declare independence from colonial authority. Ghana has a population of 30,083,000 as of 2019. Approximately 29% of the population is under the age of 15, while 57.8% of people in the population are between the ages of 15 and 64. According to the 2010 census, the Akan, Moldagbeni, Yu, Gadaim, Gurma, and Guan are the major ethnic groups. Ghana was placed 108th out of 139 nations in the World Economic Forum's 2010 statistics of the world's most popular tourist destinations. The nation had climbed two spots since the 2009 standings. Ghana was listed as the world's 11th friendliest country by Forbes magazine in 2011. The claim was supported by a survey of a diverse group of travelers conducted in 2010. Ghana received the highest score out of all the African nations surveyed. The fourth largest source of foreign exchange earnings for the nation is tourism. Ghana was ranked as the 43rd most peaceful nation in the world in 2017. There is thus a lot to say about Ghana which will completely alter the perspective you might have about Africa. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about Ghana and how it can change your mind about Africa. Modern day, the majority of Ghana, which became independent on March 6, 1957, is made up of the former Gold Coast. Kwame Nkrumah, a nationalist and pan-African leader, was the driving force behind the colony's independence movement. He believed that Ghana's sovereignty was crucial for both the Ghanaian people and all of Africa, stating that our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Within the following 10 years, more than 30 other African nations declared their own independence after being inspired by Ghana's example. Ghana is well known for its verdant woods, a wide variety of animal life, and miles of sandy beaches along a lovely coast, it is also praised for its rich history, with possible settlement dating back to 10,000 bis, as well as its status as an intriguing reservoir of cultural heritage. The name of the nation comes from a vast medieval commerce empire that existed until its dissolution in the 13th century and was situated northwest of the current state. The establishment of direct sea trade with Europe in the 15th century had a significant impact on the local population many of whom engaged in active trading with the Portuguese, Dutch, British, and other Europeans. Europeans built forts and castles, many of which still dot the Guinean coast today to safeguard their commercial interests. Although the region's easy access to gold, from which the name of the future British colony, the Gold Coast, was derived, originally dominated trade, the emphasis turned to the lucrative slave traffic in the 17th century. The cultivation of cacao, the plant used to make cocoa, led to the region's eventual fame. Cacao continues to be a significant export for Ghana since it was first brought there in the late 19th century. Ghana has access to hydrocarbons, precious metals, and industrial minerals. With mixed economy hybridization and an emerging market, it is an emerging designated digital economy. Ghana's Emergence Plants the objective of its economic strategy is the Ghana Vision 2020. According to this plan, Ghana would become the first developed nation in Africa between 2020 and 2029 and a newly industrialized nation between 2030 and 2039. This does not include South Africa, a sub-Saharan African nation and fellow member of the Group of 24, which is a recently industrialized nation. Together with Ghana's substantial gold reserves, the economy of Ghana is linked to the Chinese yuan renminbi, 
In 2013, the Bank of Ghana started issuing the renminbi as hard money alongside the Ghanaian CD as the second national trade currency and to the general people in Ghana. Only 11% of urban residents were poor between 2012 and 2013, compared to 38% of rural residents. Urban areas hold greater opportunity for employment, particularly in informal trade, while nearly all, 94%, of rural poor households participate in the agricultural sector. The two main electricity producers are the state-owned Volta River Authority and Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. Along with the Bui Dam, the Pong Dam, and a number of other hydroelectric dams, the 1965 construction of the Akosombo Dam on the Volta River produces hydropower. The government also aimed to construct Africa's second nuclear power facility. With a market capitalization of GH 57.2 billion or CN 180.4 billion in 2012, the Ghana Stock Exchange ranked third in Sub-Saharan Africa and fifth overall in continental Africa, after the South Africa JSE Limited. In 2013, the Ghana Stock Exchange had the second best stock market performance in Sub-Saharan Africa. Ghana makes excellent cocoa. It is the world's second largest cocoa producer. Ghana is categorized as a middle-income nation. Manufacturing, extractive industries, taxation, and services make up the next 5% of the GDP. Ghana's economy is primarily based on primary manufacturing, and it also exports digital technology products along with building and exporting ships, automobiles, industrial minerals, agricultural products, primarily cocoa, petroleum, and natural gas. Other industries include information and communications technology, particularly through Ghana's state-run digital technology company, World Communications, which makes tablets, smartphones, and other mobile devices. Cuisine. A variety of soups and stews made with various seafoods are included in Ghanaian cuisine. The majority of these soups are made with vegetables, pork, chicken, or fish. Tilempia, roasted and fried whitebait, smoked fish, and crayfish are all prominent ingredients in Ghanaian recipes, demonstrating the importance of fish in the local diet. The staples kenki and banku, both consisting of ground maize, are typically served with grilled tilapia or some type of fried fish chinam, as well as a highly hot sauce made from raw red and green chilies, onions, and tomatoes. In most restaurants, banku with tilapia is a popular combination. The most popular meal from Ghana that is exported is fufu, which is prized throughout the African diaspora. Rice is an established staple meal across the country, with various rice-based dishes serving as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The main variants are waki, plain rice, and stew, fried rice, and jollof rice. Clothing The 13th century saw the development of Ghanaian's distinctive adinkra printing technique. Only royalty was allowed to wear handmade adinkra, clothing for religious rituals. It was hand-printed and hand-embroidered. The names and meanings of each of the motifs that make up the corpus of adinkra symbolism are derived from adages, historical occurrences, human attitudes, ethologies, plant life forms, or the shapes of inanimate and artificial items. The modus meanings can be divided into categories such as aesthetics, ethics, interpersonal relationships, and concepts. The tattoos of the Adinkra people have a decorative purpose, but they also depict things that embody symbolic meanings that express traditional knowledge, facets of life, or the environment. There are many symbols with distinct meanings, often linked with proverbs. In the words of Anthony Appiah, they were one of the means in a pre-literate society for supporting the transmission of a complex and nuanced body of practice and belief. Most southern Ghanaian ethnic groups, notably the Akan, the Ga, and the Yu, dress in Kent cloth, Ghana's traditional or national fabric. Ghanaians employ a variety of cloth fabrics for their traditional clothing in addition to a Dinkra cloth. The various ethnic groups each have their own distinctive clothing. The Kent cloth is the most well-known. Kent is a very significant national costume, and both traditional and contemporary Kent apparel are made from this costume. Different colors and symbols have various connotations. The most well-known Ghanaian clothing is Kent. Kent is a ceremonial cloth that is hand-woven on a horizontal treadle loom. Larger pieces of cloth are created by sewing together strips that are about 4 inches wide. 
Cloths come in various colors, sizes, and designs, and are worn during very important social and religious occasions. Music and Dance Various musical instruments are utilized in music, including talking drum ensembles, akin drums, goge fiddles, coloco lutes, court music genres like akin seprua, akan atumpen, and gok panlogo, and log xylophones used in asanko music. Kofi Ganabo was the father of African jazz. Highlife music is one type of secular music. The 19th and 20th centuries saw the beginning of highlife, which later extended throughout West Africa. Hip hop, dance hall, Afro reggae, and highlife were all incorporated into a new musical genre in the 1990s. Hip life was the term for this mixture. For various events, there are dances the Adawa, Panlogo, Azanto, Klama, Igbadza, Borborbor, and Bamaya are some of the celebratory dances. Architecture There are two different styles of construction. Spherical huts with grass roofs and a row of nearby dwellings arranged in an enclosure around a common. The series of neighboring structures are in the southern regions, while the round huts with grass roofs are in the northern regions. The southern regions are home to postmodern and high-tech structures, while the country's more than 30 forts and castles, including Fort William and Fort Amsterdam, are heritage monuments. Two museums in Ghana are housed inside a fort, while two more are found inside castles. Temporary exhibitions are organized by the National Museum and the Military Museum. Ghana has museums that provide a detailed look at particular geographic areas. There are a number of museums that provide insight into the traditions and history of the geographical areas. The Cape Coast Castle Museum and Street George's Museum offer guided tours. The Museum of Science and Technology provides its visitors with a look into the domain of scientific development through exhibits of objects of scientific and technological interest. Tourism We can't exhaust this list without talking about the tourism sector of Ghana. Ghana is proud to have waterfalls like the Tagbo Falls, the biggest waterfall in West Africa, and the Kintampo Waterfalls. Ghana also boasts of caves, mountains, rivers, and beaches with palm trees. It also has a meteorite impact crater, Lake Wasumtwi, the Wasumtwi Meteorite Crater, and Lake Volta, the largest man-made lake in the world by surface area, are just a couple of the other attractions. Countless castles and forts, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, wildlife preserves, and national parks may also be found in Ghana. According to figures from the World Economic Forum, Ghana was the 138th most popular tourist destination in the world in 2010. The country had moved two places up from the 2009 rankings. In 2011, Forbes magazine published that Ghana was ranked the 11th most friendly country in the world. The assertion was based on a survey conducted in 2010 of a cross-section of travelers. Ghana placed first out of all the African nations that were surveyed. Ghana is ranked as the 58th most peaceful nation in the world and the 70th most stable nation overall. In all, Ghana is a beautiful country and remains a beacon of hope to all Africa as it not only changes the perspective and views of the continent, but continually redefine the concepts of Africanism. This brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please do show us some love by turning on notifications and also dropping down your comments in the comment section below so all your dreams will come to pass.